Welcome to today's Software AG webcast titled Alphabet Portfolio Playbook, Managing Your Digital Strategy Roadmap. Today's webcast will be presented by David Ferry, Director of Alphabet Product Management at Software AG. As we move through today's presentation, I invite you to submit any questions that you may have via the Q&A box, which is located on the bottom center of your webcast dashboard. We will address your questions at the end of today's program. In the event that when I'm able to answer your question, your submission will be noted, and today's presenter will be back in touch with you as soon as possible. Today's presentation is being recorded. This program recording will be made available to you in an email that will be sent to you within approximately 24 hours. Additionally, this webcast recording will be posted to the Alphabet playlist on the Software AG YouTube channel later today. It is now my pleasure to welcome David Ferry. Uh, thank you, Will, for the introduction, and welcome everybody to this uh, portfolio playbook on the topic of strategy road mapping. Uh, just a quick reminder, this is the last of the four playbooks that we're, we've held or holding in uh, 2019. Uh, the previous three were on the topics of business capability ma management, um, EA and service management, and managing technical debt, and they're available on our YouTube channel. And each of the playbooks is a mixture of slideware with methodology and background information followed by a demonstration using Alphabet, uh, Software AG's leading product for enterprise architecture and IT portfolio management. Now to get into the topic today, uh, I, I chose to pick out some quotes from, uh, from different people from different areas. Um, the first one I'd like to take is from Robert Filek. And Robert Filek is a, a sort of senior consultant partner uh, who worked in the area of corporate and financial transactions. And he said strategy without process is a little more than a wish list. And I like this because this is um, something that we have to take uh, into account as, in our role as enterprise architects, uh, as strategists. Uh, when we're trying to um, align our operating model to strategy and things like that, we have to attack it with process, with an approach, with something that's repeatable so that we can um, carry on in the future maintaining that alignment. I think it's a very important aspect. The second quote here is from Robert Kiyosaki and he um, is an American businessman and author uh, who worked in the area of uh, business and financial education, training, um, uh, speech, speech writing, that sort of thing. And um, he wrote, he, his quote here is always start at the end before you begin. And I liked it. I like this quote because one had to think about it twice, uh, but also because it's very important to know when you're developing strategy, where, where the end point is, where are you going? You need a vision. Uh, the next quote here is about vision. It says a vision without a strategy remains an illusion. So strategy is about achieving our vision. Uh, and this quote is from Lee Bowman. He's, um, he was a professor at the uh, University of Missouri in Kansas City and is also a consultant, speaker, author, um, researcher, obviously. And similarly, uh, in the same sort of vein, without strategy, execution is aimless. Uh, without execution, strategy is useless. So this is just reminding us that when we develop strategy, we have to bring this into connection with the execution level. And that is what we do as enterprise architects, uh, as portfolio ma managers. We, we're there to align um, our portfolios, our architecture, uh, the things that are going on in execution with the strategy that has been uh, uh, decided by the organization. Uh, this is from Maurice Chang. Maurice Chang was the CEO of uh, Taiwan Semiconductors, uh, a manufacturing company, um, a very large, if not the largest, silicon foundry. And the last quote is from Sir Winston Churchill. He doesn't need any introduction, I don't think. But he says, now, however beautiful the strategy, you should always, you should occasionally look at the results. Uh, and this uh, is uh, important, and this is another thing that we should do as enterprise architects and uh, strategy professionals, is to associate uh, business outcomes and KPIs with the strategies that we're, that we're following, so that we can measure whether we're achieving our strategy or not. Um, the last, I have one more quote, and this one here is, is more motivational. It says, failure is nothing more than a chance to revise your strategy. Um, and I think it's very important that we're allowed to fail and that out of those failures, we can learn things. And I think there's an important aspect also in, in terms of corporate culture. Uh, the only thing I found a bit disturbing here is that this quote is actually anonymous. 
so with that, I'd like to talk about strategy validation. It's one of the things that we can do uh, as part of our strategy and road mapping uh, approach. And here we're really talking about documentation of the strategy and then um, further analysis of it. Why do we need to do that? We need to do it because business strategy is not necessarily clearly defined. And it's also something that is being pushed at from many different directions, whether it be from top down, the CEO, uh, or from different business units and, and uh, organizational units, or because of technology changes. These are all going to be things that are going to come in to form our strategy. Uh, and we need to look at that and try and get a handle of the complexity of the, of the strategy. Uh, so for this, we obviously want to make the, tra the strategy transparent to understand the different uh, push and pull points in our strategy to get stakeholders on board uh, and preferably to expose any conflicts in the strategy early. If we can expose them at, at the stage where we're still considering what the strategy should be, that is, we save a lot of money. If we, if we find out the conflicts later in the game or during execution, then it could be that we've sunk an awful lot of money to something that's not going to work. Uh, obviously, we then want to align the execution to that strategy, and this is one of our core tasks in the EA team. Um, along with actually then analyze, as, as part of that task, is actually then analyzing uh, the impact on the architecture and to create a future state architecture and then roadmap that. Uh, part of our road mapping approach. Uh, and last but not least, this is following up on the Winston Churchill uh, quote, we want to have KPIs that are measuring strategy fulfillment and to associate those with our strategy and to track them. And obviously if they're not um, in line with what we want to achieve, we have to then go back to the drawing board, analyze why not, that sort of thing. Now one thing when we think about strategies is it's, it's not necessarily one strategy that we have, we have a portfolio of options, and this is why we have here in the bottom left, uh, business strategy portfolios. And this options could be whether we go in high end or low end in the market, whether we try to offer a suite or be a point solution, uh, whether we offer services or product, et cetera, et cetera. We have options. And this is really a business, a portfolio of strategies that we're managing. Along with that, we have the other portfolios, the classic portfolios that we manage in, in portfolio management in the EA. Uh, the IT change portfolios, our initiatives, our agile release trains and projects, et cetera. The things are actually changing something. And our assets, uh, the applications, it could also be business ad assets in terms of hardware and, and, and plants and things like that. But obviously, these three portfolios um, are being managed by the people who are responsible, but also they have to recognize they're very interconnected. And this is why we talk about integrated IT portfolio or integrated portfolio management, because we need to see uh, the linkage between uh, the projects and, and, and programs that we're running, how they're supporting strategy, uh, how they're impacting our assets, how changes in our assets might also impact our strategy, et cetera. Uh, and this is a very important aspect. We can't manage the portfolio strategies independent of the other things. Obviously, strategy should be the lead, uh, and we would change the assets following the leader strategy, but we have to understand what, what's involved. Uh, and this is really following up in the same vein, uh, because it's not only that we want to understand from an analytical point of view how these things are inter integrated. Uh, if we see them as an integrated uh, aspect, as one portfolio of, of strategies, of programs, of assets, uh, and manage those as an integrated one, then we obviously want to get the different stakeholders on board and using the same view uh, to manage their own um, internal processes of how they reach their IT portfolio and how to, they reach their strategies, et cetera. And this is really important aspect in terms of how we develop Alphabet. We've developed Alphabet so it supports lots of different types of stakeholders and uh, can bring them into this process of developing strategy, developing roadmaps, doing it as part of a portfolio, doing it as a global, um, being a manager, being a, a contributor, et cetera. We support these different types of views and these need to be integrated. The strategy has different aspects on one level. We could say, oh, we have business te strategy, technology strategy, we could also have a financial strategy. But in terms of road mapping, these sort of things we'd be looking at. But these in themselves are also not um, monolithic. There are different aspects to strategy. On the business side, we could look at things like customer experience, product and operations as different aspects of our strategy. Uh, technology, we could look at the uh, architecture, cloud integration and other aspects. Uh, this is no, by no means comprehensive, but this just shows there are different types of strategy. Uh, we want to be able to roadmap that 
these things in different, uh, in a consistent way and also juxtapose them and present them. But also it could be we need different types of approaches depending on how we want to present the strategy. Uh, and for that, like look at this slide. We've, I've used this slide before, but I think it's useful uh, to show it again. And this is really about when we talk about road mapping, what sort of considerations should we consider? Uh, the first one is, is to understand the stakeholders. Uh, depending on who you're presenting to and what type of roadmap it is, uh, you might need a different uh, perspective on the plan data. You might need a different visualization. Uh, the three visualizations we see here on the left-hand side are actually three visualizations of the same plan data. Uh, one is the classic Gantt roadmap. Uh, the second one in the middle is actually uh, a migration uh, diagram using the same data. And this migration diagram might be useful for the applications team. Uh, and the third one is actually a rollout plan for the different organizations. And this would be useful in uh, communicating to the business organizations when to expect certain applications. And this is why we need different types of perspectives, different types of roadmap, even though the plan data behind it might be the same. Uh, it's obviously good if you make them easy to read. You want to get your stakeholders involved uh, using the roadmaps, accepting the roadmaps, uh, being able to contribute and say, ha ha, it'd be better if this came in this and this order. And it's good if you use the same road mapping approach throughout the enterprise, um, <clears throat> because that makes it easier for different organizational units to collaborate on planning. If they're all using the same approach, if they're using the same set of visualizations, it makes life a lot easier. And last but definitely not least, the roadmaps should be generated from plan data. These three were generated from plan data. By doing so, it's more efficient because I don't have to actually go through and, and diagram or uh, use PPT, whatever it is to create these. It also makes them more maintainable. If I change the plan, I don't have to go through and change three different uh, visualizations uh, manually. And because I'm not doing it manually, the roadmap has more reliability, there's less errors in it. Now in terms of looking at visualizations and, and strategy roadmaps, there are a few, that, a couple that we have in alphabet that I'd like to show here because they don't come in the demo that, that follows. Uh, this one is a Sunray diagram. Uh, this is all, another generated visualization, visualization. And what we see here is actually a, a, a visualization of strategy. Uh, basically what we see in these different lanes that are sort of converging on the finish uh, are different strategic themes. Uh, we see a time aspect, which is our roadmap, takeoff, midterm, end game, finish. And we see the yellow dots and the yellow dots represent initiatives. And um, this gives us an idea, okay, for each strategic theme, which initiatives we have, where are they today? And we also see arrows, such as here, connecting to, and this shows us dependencies, uh, saying, okay, this initiative is depending on these two finishing. Uh, in this case, it's not dependent, but it's an opportunity. So here we have an overview of the strategy and certain dependencies within that strategy. And this could be useful for corporate communication. Uh, we could also make the size of the yellow dots different. So that could be size by cost, for example. And this is all generated. Here we have uh, more of a hype cycle or a phase cycle uh, roadmap. Uh, this is really explaining, used to explain, okay, when do we tend, this is for technology strategy, when do we intend to use certain uh, technologies and when do we tend, uh, intend to phase them out? Uh, and by having this sort of graphical view, it's a good way of communicating that. This is again generated, you, you can uh, configure what type of graph it is behind this and also rules for how them, the different objects are mapped onto that graph. Uh, and last but not least, this is a, um, what we call a circular roadmap, there are other different names, radar chart, but it's basically also a roadmap. You see here in the concentric circles going outwards, we have a number of years. And this is for innovation, this example. The further out, the later the innovation intent is, is going to happen. And the, the dots on this and the triangles, they are the innovations. Uh, the color actually here is an indication of what impact they're going to have on our business. Uh, and uh, the different shape is actually to tell us how far are we in, in processing that innovation. Do we have a project? Do we have a demand? This sort of information. So we get a quick view of, okay, which ones are relevant to us? Uh, <clears throat> which ones are in, in process? And when can we expect to actually work with these innovations? Uh, so this is, again, another way of presenting strategy and roadmap information with a different visualization. Uh, the last thing I'd just like to mention is, is the context uh, of this sort of strategy road mapping and the context of Enterprise Agile. Enterprise Agile is a huge topic today. 
and um, it, it covers, this is an example of the SAFE uh, framework, there are other ones that are just less, et cetera, um, but um, it covers sort of a whole stack of, of Agile from implementation right up to strategy, and the stuff we're really positioning in this uh, webinar today uh, is happening here at the top as part of the Lean Portfolio Management where we're saying, okay, which strategic themes do we need for these strategies that we're following? Um, uh, how are we going to roadmap those, that sort of thing. So with that, I'd like to uh, finish the introduction and go over to the demo. Uh, I'm just going to leave the uh, presentation and go over to the browser. And here we are logged on uh, as a user called John Customer who could log out, change the language or change the profile. Uh, the profile is what gives the user his um, uh, role-based access and has such sort of governs the data he can see and change, the visualizations, the, the processes he can support, the functionality, etc. Uh, and so it can be tuned to whether this is uh, a manager or a contributor, somebody who's doing the planning needs a broad functional spectrum, etc. Um, we're looking here at the strategy. Uh, and here we see uh, in this explorer on the left hand side, we see uh, the overall vision to become a leading digital bank. It's a financial institution. And this has been broken down into five goals uh, develop a dif digital technology strategy, foster product and service innovation, offer uh, industry specific financial services, uh, customer experience excellence, and uh, operational excellence. Uh, this has further been broken down. We can further break this down into um, uh, objectives and they've been bro they're broken down into strategic themes and by doing this we get a, a, a finer and finer picture of our strategy and we can uh, fit certain things that are going on in our organization that are coming from the site suddenly into the strategy say where do they fit in and present that as part of our strategy. Uh, we see the same information here on the uh, right hand side in this report. Right, I'll just scroll there a little bit. Um, see it here uh, and we see the same sort of information we see here the the vision uh, the main goals and how it's been broken down in this sort of visualization we have uh, some extra information that is presented one it's very uh, easy to see quickly which um, which objectives or goals haven't been broken down to strategic themes at the level where we'd want to click into execution uh, so here at the top we see that uh, we also see information on, on the state of these things, if you like roadmap information for our strategy. Uh, the ones here that are in gray are the ones that have been concluded or rejected. Um, the ones in yellow are ongoing and the ones in blue are new. And what we also see is a, a weighting here. We see a contribution. Here we see that these four objectives have an equal contribution to this uh, goal. Here at the top, we see that an unequal contribution. This is uh, 0.16, 28%, 28%. Um, this is actually uh, useful in calcula doing calculations on contribution of a certain strategic theme to our overall strategy. Helps us in, in terms of managing that portfolio of strategic themes. Uh, if we go down just a bit further, what we also see is an example here of um, an objective which is supporting two goals. So this is not actually hierarchical, it's actually a network. Um, and here we don't have that many networked examples, but this could be a whole crisscross of, of themes. Uh, there are certain things that we do that support multiple goals. Uh, what I'd like to do now is go and have a look at one of the strategic themes. Uh, for that, I'm going to search for it. It's here, the real time yeah, customer interaction. And this is a strategic theme. And at this level, we want to start plugging and road mapping uh, our strategy or our strategic theme uh, um, uh, in terms of execution. Uh, so what we see here actually is first an overview, some overview information. But if we scroll down, scroll down, what we see as part of this overview information is firstly the uh, initiatives that have been started for this strategic theme uh, or have been planned. In this case, it's a planned one. Uh, you see here that some are in light green and some are in a darker green. This is actually projects in these agile release trains. So we have here a hybrid portfolio of agile product centric release trains and, and the classic projects. Uh, we see information on, on status and some milestone information, et cetera. So we've got some roadmap information here. And here we have also a roadmap of the business outcomes. And this is very important 
uh, so that we can map out when we, we expect to achieve certain things. And this is the sort of thing that helps us to assess whether we're actually following our strategy. Uh, if we scroll back up, we can also drill here into uh, uh, another form of roadmap. This is the, uh, an architecture roadmap. And what we see here are the uh, different parts of the architecture behind this strategic theme. We see different organizations are involved, uh, which are executing certain business capabilities that are shown here at the top in green. Uh, and we see the applications and also uh, organizational units, such as this core center, that are part of the operating model behind this strategic theme. Uh, and we see here roadmap information because the things here that are in blue are actually uh, the current situation uh, and the things that are in yellow uh, are the future state. Uh, so we can also communi communicate here our architecture strategy as part of the roadmap. We also have here some information on ideation for this strategic theme and also for funnel management. I just want to take a look at this. Uh, in the funnel management, we have an overview of the demands and epics uh, for this strategic theme. Uh, we could actually, it's a Kanban board, we could uh, say this one that's been approved has been completed. We could uh, change this and manage the funnel in this way. Uh, we see some information here. You see uh, that some of them are actually uh, bordered with red. These are actually demands and epics that to date have no implementing project or agile release trains. So we know that uh, these things here have been in some form allocated, whereas these are still open. Uh, it's in, in, important in terms of understanding our state, in terms of execution. And if we scroll down again, we see this Gantt chart that we saw earlier. Uh, but here we have more information in terms of the funnel. If we look at this agile release train, we see that it has one epic currently. Uh, it has, it's been approved. It has a target date as part of our roadmap. And we can actually drill into more detail and see this has certain features. Uh, these have also got a status and some of them have got a target date uh, which actually be on this one of the epics so we'd have to investigate that. So we see here some detailed road mapping information uh, that talks about the state of execution uh, and this information is also shown here overall for the uh, strategic theme not on a project by project basis uh, with also information uh, here in, in widget uh, uh, form uh, on how many have been implemented and how many have been operationalized? And here, this operationalized means that uh, the product manager is not only decided, okay, this is uh, something that's going to be implemented for the strategic theme. He's also sent it to JIRA and operationalized that by making a ticket or an issue in JIRA. Uh, so with that, I'd like to conclude the demo part uh, of the uh, portfolio playbook uh, and just go over and <clears throat> give you a reminder that we're, this is our last portfolio playbook for this year. So I'd like to take the opportunity to thank you that have joined us throughout the year and today. And uh, wish you all a good holiday period and good end of year. And uh, yeah, hope to see you again in the next year. And uh, with that, uh, Will, I'd like to see if there's any questions that have come in. Perfect. We do have a couple. I'm going to start off with the first one, and it is as follows. The digital strategy roadmap visualization types are all three supported by software AG uh, the three on the slide I guess we're talking about here and yes there were they were screenshots from uh, alphabet there are there uh, generate reports from alphabet uh, I screenshotted the product for those I think as a follow-up to that question the questioner is referring to the demo Seeing the plan for Vision VMND 56 appears to be demonstrated from Alphabet. Does the strategy have to come from Alphabet, from Aris, excuse me, because we have Alphabet but not Aris? No, not at all, not at all. Uh, you can also create the strategy uh, in Alphabet. Um, um, that's a standard, standard feature. Um, it's uh, depending on licensing, but it's a standard feature. And um, what we did is implement an integration to Iris for our customers that develop the strategy in Iris and then import it into uh, Alphabet as part of the framework for the uh, enterprise architecture and IT portfolio management um, questions and discipline. Okay, the next thing I have for you, are the reports and roadmaps that were demonstrated easy to program? Um, they, they're not programmed. We don't use script languages or stuff like that to create the reports. They're actually uh, configured using assistance and uh, UI. This is done through our web UI. Uh, so it's available also for, for SaaS customers. 
And um, the investor actually to create new reports is, is quite low. It's not, not that difficult. Um, obviously, you need to understand the data and you need to understand what you want to achieve. But uh, if you know that, then you're probably three quarters of the way to producing the report and it's actually quite quick to do. Okay, the next one I have, which is the last question I have, do you link strategy and the funnel to the downstream implementation solutions? Uh, definitely, um, definitely, that's very important. Uh, there was also this quote from uh, Winston Churchill about, no, not from Winston Churchill, from the other guy, actually, confusing myself here, um, about the need to uh, integrate execution and strategy. And as we see that uh, as part of, of the product, we need to do this and we integrate downstream solutions such as JIRA, which I think I mentioned in the demo, uh, but also to things like PPM solutions, CMDB, um, to your web services repository, things where you want to have some sort of governance uh, from a strategy and planning perspective uh, on what is being executed, but also to get feedback from those systems on performance that you can use as part of your portfolio assessment. And um, uh, for this purpose, we have what we call uh, ADIF and, and Alphabet, Alphabet Data Integration Facility. And this is um, a batch and uh, online web service uh, approach to integration, which is uh, again, easy to configure and uh, highly scalable. And um, quite often customers uh, do their own integrations using it. Okay, great. Uh, so just to reiterate and follow up, to David's remarks about the future programs. You can register for all of the webcasts that Software AG does offer by visiting softwareag.com and then clicking on the events link under the company tab. David, with that, thank you very much for your time and a very informative presentation today. Our program has now ended. Enjoy the rest of your day.